Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 9, Rotation of Rigid Bodies, Video 3. Today's topic is relating linear and angular momentum. Today's objective is to be able to relate the rotation of rigid body to the linear velocity and linear acceleration of a point on the body. So we have learned before, these are the set of equations for linear motion. This is the set of equations for rotational motion. We know alpha corresponding to a, omega corresponding to b, and theta corresponding to x. Today we're going to learn how they are related. How is x, theta related to x? How is omega related to b? And how is alpha related to a? So let's take a look at a picture. When a rigid body rotates about a fixed axis, every particle in the body moves in a circular path. So everybody, every uh, point has the same omega. So let's take a look at this particular uh, particle. This particle has a radius of r. At this uh, moment, it has a dist the linear um, distance is s. Then it has a linear displacement is a theta. The two are related by this relationship, s equals to r times theta. Now, if uh, theta is changing and s is changing, we can do derivatives. This d, s over d, uh, dt is the same as d theta over dt because r doesn't change. ds over dt is your v, and d theta over dt is omega. This is how v relate to omega. Linear speed uh, relate to angular speed. So the further a point is from the axis, the greater its linear speed is. So the direction of the linear uh, velocity is always tangent to the circular path at each point. Quotient, speed versus velocity. We know speed is scalar quantity. So speed, both linear speed and angular speed, they can never be negative. They're the magnitude of velocity and the linear velocity and the angular velocity. On the other hand, if in one dimension Vx and omega z, they can be either positive or negative. That positive and negative uh, indicate the direction of motion, not magnitude. Now let's take a look how the acceleration relates. Well, if an object moving in an arc or a circular path, its acceleration has two parts. It has tangential acceleration and a radial acceleration. So in this slide, let's talk about tangential acceleration. Tangential acceleration is a component that's parallel to V, uh, A10. And what does this component tell us? This component tells us how fast the speed changes. Now, A10 is how fast the speed changes. That's dV over dt. And V equals R times omega. We know R is constant for any particular point where um, on this um, rigid body. So R can be factoring out, R does not change. So this expression becomes R times d omega over dt. d omega over dt equals to alpha. So the relationship between a tan and alpha is a tan equals to R times alpha. Now let's talk about other component. Other component is the radio component. This is the radio component we call it uh, in the regions, we call it a centripetal acceleration because it's always pointing toward the center, the other component. It tells us how fast direction is changing. And we know centripetal acceleration equals V squared over R. V equals R omega. We um, open this up equals R squared times omega squared divided by R. So A red equals R times omega squared. This is true at each instant, even when omega and V are not constant. So the vector sum of centripetal and tangential component tells us the magnitude of acceleration, linear acceleration, using Pythagorean theorem. We can also use inverse tan to tell us the direction of A. Question, you, we must use angles in radians in all equations, otherwise uh, it will not work. Let's take a look at our first example. So the discus thrower moves the radius, uh, the discus in a circle with a radius of 80 centimeters. So from here to the armpit is 0.8 meters. 
At a certain instant, the thrower is spinning at angular speed of 10 radians per second, and the angular speed is increasing at 50 radians per second squared. So 10 radians per second, that's your omega. 50 radians per second squared, that's your alpha. So at this instant, find a tangential and a centripetal component of acceleration. That's A tan and A red. And what is A? So try to do it yourself, see if you can figure it out. So A tan is R times alpha. Plug it in. A red is R times omega squared. Then A is just A tan plus A red uh, using Pythagorean theorem. Now you probably wonder what happened to red. Well, remember red, uh, the radian? What is this radian? Radian is a ratio of the arc's length over the radius. Both have meters. So radian is really a dimensionless quantity, it has no dimensions. So that's why we drop the radian. Let's take a look at another example. So you are asked to design an airplane propeller to turn at 24 rotation per um, minute, a revolution per minute. The forward airspeed of the plane is to be uh, 75 meters per second and speed of the tips of the propeller blades through the air must not exceed 270 meters per second. So that's a maximum. So actually, this blade is rotating in front like a spiral, like this, okay? What is the maximum radius of the propeller can have? So to solve this, first we have to convert omega, this is your omega, into radian per second. So omega in radian per second, you used revolution per minute times each revolution is 2 pi radian, and each minute is 60 seconds, so omega equals 251 radian per second. That is your omega. Next one, as you can see the side view. So this is V10. We really don't know. What, what we're given is the tip. This V tip is 270 meters per second. Remember the propeller is moving in like a, a spiral motion, so it's going forward like this spiral motion. So this v, uh, v tip we know, we also know V plane. So from those two, we can figure out V10 using Pythagorean theorem. V10 is 259 meters per second. So if we know V10, that's your linear speed, rotational speed, V10 equals R times omega. We can figure out R equals to 1.03 meters. That is the maximum radius of the propeller can have. Next one, what is acceleration of a propeller's tip? Remember, acceleration has two parts, has a tan plus a red. Since v tan is constant, so a tan has to be zero because, uh, I mean, a, a tan is a zero. I mean, omega is constant, so v tan is constant, right? So a tan has to be zero. A red equals omega squared times R. That gives you 6.5 times 10 to the 4 meters per second squared. As you can see, A red is really, really, really big. That is because this propeller is rotating very, very fast. In order to produce a very fast speed, you must exert a tremendous amount of force. That means there has to be 6.5 times 10 to the 4 newtons of force on each kilogram of material at this tip. Therefore, the propeller must be made from tough material. Otherwise, it's going to break apart. It's aluminum alloy. It's kind of light and very sturdy. Next example, how are the angular speed of the two bicycle sprockets related to the number of teeth on each sprocket? So you probably, oh, everybody ride bikes. Remember for uh, when you grow up, you probably have multi-speed uh, bike. That means you have different gears that you can switch. So let's see. First, we know um, this doesn't come so off, right? The, the chain must 
smash or mash each gear at the same speed. The chain does not slip on a stretch. What does that mean? That means the V for the rear has to be the same as V on the front. So V rare has to be equals V in the front. So R rare times omega rare has to be R front times omega front. Then that means omega rare over omega front has to be R front over R rare. Oh, this should be rare. So that means the smaller uh, your the disk is, the faster it has to turn. The smaller the radius, the faster it has to turn. It's inversely related. The angular speed is inversely proportional to the radius. By the way, this should be R, right? This relationship also holds for pulley connected by a belt, provided belt does not slip. For a chain sprockets, the teeth must be equally spaced so they can mash properly. So that in front be the number of teeth in the front and rear be the number of teeth in the, the rear. So that means the number of teeth in front, the, the space for the front is 2 pi r front over n front, has to be the space in the rear between the teeth is 2 pi r rear over n rear. Or 2 pi and 2 pi cancels r front, the radius of r uh, in the front wheel to the radius of r in the, in the back wheel has to be directly proportional to the number of teeth in the front wheel to the number of teeth in the back wheel because the, the space between each teeth has to be the same. So we know R front over R rare equals omega rare over omega front. So what does that tell us? So omega rare over omega front equals number of teeth in the front over number of teeth in the rare. So this is the same relationship, right? So the more teeth you have, the slower you're rotating. That makes sense? The, less teeth you have, you have to rotate in faster so you can match up with the front. So the angular speed of each sprocket is inversely proportional to the number of teeth. On a multiple speed bike, you get highest angular speed, omega rare, of the rear wheel for a given pedaling rate omega front when the rotation n front of n rare is maximum. So this is the gear proportion. So this means using the largest radius front sprocket and the smallest radius of the rear sprocket to make the fastest speed. Okay, check your understanding. So information is stored on CD or DVD in a coded pattern. In a coded pattern of tiny pits. So the pits are arranged. in a track that spirals outward toward the rim of the disc. As the disc spins inside the player, the track is scanned at a constant linear speed. How must the rotation speed of the disc change as the player's scanning head moves over the track? So what it tells us is the speed, the linear speed is constant. So what is the choice? So let's see, V, equals r times omega. So as r increases, as you're spinning outward, r has to increase. v is constant, that means omega must decrease. So the answer is two. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.